everyone, welcome back to Project Happy Home. I'm Tanya and today I'm doing a follow-up review of the Plum Paper Student Planner. That's like a tongue twister. Um, and stay tuned through the video because at some point in the video I will give you guys a 10% off code if you're interested in getting your own planner from Plum Paper, whether a personal planner, a teacher planner, or a student planner, or I believe a fitness planner as well. Um, so I have really been enjoying this and I definitely think I will be using it again next year. I might get the larger size. As you can see, this is the smaller size. It's about um, a little less than eight inches, a little less than eight inches by I think about nine and a half or nine and three quarters. Um, and those details are in my other video. Um, if you look at the other video, you can see exactly what all the pages look like. I just wanted to show you how I've been using it. Here they have a two page spread of special dates for each month where people could put in birthdays. I have chosen to use it as a list of activities that we've been doing in these months, like ex extracurricular activities, such as play dates or museum visits or um, special co-op field trips, things like that. There's another page of ideas, plans, and goals where instead I just kind of use this page this year to track some of my preschoolers curriculum and a little bit of a reading log as well. And on this page, which was just our first August notes page, so our first notes page that I encountered, I've been writing down random curriculum that we've been using and trying out. I know it's a lot, as I mentioned before, um, since it's our first um, year homeschooling, I've been all over the place trying to figure out what works for him. So on the monthly spread, here's August, I use these pages to track what I'm doing with my preschooler. So in general, I don't have a set planned curriculum for her this year. She was three when we began, so she was three in August. She just turned four, and I have materials for her, and whatever she feels like pulling out of her drawers, I'll tell her, go pick something from your math um, box, and she'll pick out something, and we do a page in there. So I just try to track what we're doing. If we watch a video, if we watch, um, if we do a song, I just write it down here. Um, it's a very unstructured curriculum. This is an example of how I've been using the weekly planning pages. This is one of our first weeks homeschooling, and Part of the reason I bought this planner was to be able to track how much we get through in a day. I realized very early on that my initial plans were far too complex and, and jam-packed for my first grader. So this gives me a nice way of tracking what we're actually doing every day. So as um, I mentioned before, the Plum Paper Planner Company allows you to customize what you have in each of these categories. And I've put down English, math, history, geography, social studies, Spanish and sign language, science, our classical conversations, so CC and any extracurricular activities. I've also started using these little dot stickers um, in different colors to denote different things. So green is like science experiments, yellow are videos or songs or some sort of um, media that we use in addition to it. The red is for art, music, um, anything artistic. Uh, the blue is for computer things. Um, so any kind of computer or programming or um, iPad kind of game, those things. And I write down little memories, little things that they say. Like I think G7 said, if you never um, sing to me again, I would cry until I died, <laughs> until I was dead. So I just write down cute things that they randomly say. Um, and then I try to keep track of things here. What I've started to doing here, here I wrote outside trips. What I've actually started doing, you'll see later. I started putting vocab um, in my Saturday box and spelling in my Sunday box or vice versa. I try to keep a list of things that I have to get done or get prepped here in this blank they let you label it however you like and then quizzes or tests i put like spelling words that we're having trouble with or things that we have to remember to work on for next week um, every month ends with another blank note page just to let you know and then here so here's an example of that first um page for october where i've started doing this where i in the goals instead of goals i put down what books he's read himself um and this doesn't include pleasure reading. This is pretty much what he's read in homeschool. So he reads like things like Transformers and uh, Ninjago books and other random little story books he finds around our, the house or in our bookshelves. But I don't really track that because I don't want him to get this idea that all reading should be tracked or is a um, scholastic pursuit. I just want him to enjoy that. 
And I just try to track what we're actually reading and discussing in our homeschool. I put down our children's, uh, our art study together. We did Children Playing on the Beach by Mary Cassatt this in um, October. And then I put down vocab words that we've been building through Bookshark. And there were quite a few that month. So uh, it gives me a nice easy way to reference what we've been doing. To give you another example, I do use little flags. This is um, my uh, preschooler's flag, which allows me to see what she's been doing. And I have another flag to easily flip to where we are for my son. As you can see, towards Thanksgiving week and the end of November, we started to get a little bit um, disorganized. But, and I also decided that I didn't need a category for CC because we generally do the same thing every week. So now I put in our spirit readings for spiritual growth and as well as our read alouds in there. So I'm still experimenting. This is the way it's been working for us. Just so you can see really quickly what a blank layout looks like. This is what it is. Each box is about a little bit more than an inch um, tall and probably about an inch and a half wide. Um, I would like those to be a little bit larger as I've discovered. So next year when I use it for an actual planner, I will um, go ahead and get the larger size, which is I think a little bit bigger than eight and a half by 11. Um, as I said, I've been super happy with this planner. In the end, there is a pocket folder here where I generally keep stickers and another calendar for the following year, which I find helpful, as well as a list of holidays. There's a list of contacts, which I won't show you because I generally put in their extracurricular activities and contacts in there. There's also these grid pages. I've been tracking like anything that we actually do a test on. Um, my son doesn't really uh, like testing, but he doesn't dislike it either. So I feel like just for our math reviews, as well as our, um, as well as our spelling reviews, I just give him a test grade so that he can get an extra ticket for the day because he generally does really well and it gives him another opportunity to feel like he's succeeded. Um, I hope this was helpful to you guys and the code is HAPPY10. So if you'd like to get 10% off on your purchase, just go ahead and put in HAPPY10 in your coupon code uh, box when you check out and hopefully you'll get your 10% off. Um, as always, I enjoyed making this video for you guys. If you like this type of video, please hit the thumbs up below and don't forget to subscribe. As always, I hope you guys have a great week and thanks so much for watching.